Guys, in this video, we want to look at the lab diagnosis of poliomyelitis. Very important for exam. And uh, so far, what we have seen, let us look at very quickly. We saw that poliovirus is a RNA virus. Structure of it, icosahedral symmetry. And uh, RNA is linear, single-stranded, no envelope. Antigens, risk factors, who can catch poliomyelitis. The pathogenesis of poliomyelitis. Then we saw the pathogenesis, clinical manifestations. Now we have come to lab diagnosis, right? So, lab diagnosis, only two uh, main headings are there. Virus isolation and antibody detection, okay? So, virus isolation, antibody detection. So, virus isolation in that again, three things are there. Specimen collection, transport, cell line. Specimen collection. If it is a one week, within one week, you can take throat swab. Throat swab and if it is uh, six to eight weeks, up to six to eight weeks, you can take stool sample or rectal swab. What happens after that? After that, it's not sure, guys. Uh, even uh, I'm not sure. It says here that virus isolation from CSO of blood is very rare, so require not required to do that probably. Long-term excretion has been observed in immunodeficient persons, but if the person is not immunodeficient, then obviously he will not excrete the virus. Okay, then coming to transport. The specimen should be kept frozen during transport to the laboratory. Okay, that's it. Freeze during transport. Cell line. Primary monkey kidney cells are most recommended cell lines. Virus growth can be identified by various methods. Okay, so where will you um, recommend, where, which cell line do you recommend? Monkey kidney cells. Okay, so this is where they, into the, in these cells only they can isolate the virus. Virus growth can be identified by various methods. Now how can you identify the growth of the virus? Cytopathogenic effects appear within 3 to 6 days. Okay, so there will be crenation and degeneration of the entire cell sheet. Then you can have antigen detection weight. Cytopathogenic effects. So basically, there will be crenation and degeneration of entire cell sheet within 3 to 6 days. Okay, what are we discussing currently? We are discussing cell line. Polio, monkey kidney cells, most recommended cell lines, okay. Here virus growth, how will you identify? Either by cytopathogenic effect or antigen detection or PCR, okay. Yeah, please come back to poliomyelitis. Here you can see, how will you detect the virus? Cytopathogenic effect where you can see crenation and degeneration of entire cell sheet within 3 to 6 days. Then you can also detect antigen. What are the antigens? DNC, dense and Capsid, correct? You have seen the, you have seen the antigen names here. See here? D and C. Remember? Or all forgot? It's okay if you forget, you can rewatch the video, na? <laughs> okay. So, antigen you can detect or you can also detect the specific gene by PCR assay. So, this is the virus isolation. How do you isolate the virus? First, take the specimen from the human being. And then you culture it in monkey kidney cells. Then you can see cytopathogenic effects. Antigen you can detect and also you can do PCR assay. Okay, now let us go to antibody detection. Till now it was antigen, now it is antibody. Okay. In antibody detection, now what will happen? You will be collecting the sera, sera. One to two weeks interval you will keep collecting. And you will check the rising antibody titer. Okay. And both neutralizing antibodies and complement fixing antibodies. Both of them you can detect. Only first infection with polio virus produces strictly type specific responses. So, in the, if it is a first infection, then there will be type specific responses. Subsequent infections, what will happen? There will be antibodies against the group specific antigen common to all the three serotypes. Okay. Nothing understood. No, everything went above the head. Yeah. There are three types of polio, you know, no type 1, type 2, type 3 based on the antigen. Antigens are DNC, dense and capsid. Now they are saying you have to detect the antibodies. Antibodies, what you will detect? Rising titer. 
So you will have to keep taking the blood and keep checking every one to two weeks if the titers are rising. What and all you will check? You will check neutralizing, neutralizing anti bodies, and you can check complement fixing antibodies. Okay, and if it is a fresh infection. first infection then you can see specific response but if it is a subsequent infection there will be uh, group specific antigen which is antibodies against the group specific antigen pretty clear right antibodies against the group itself okay so now we finished the lab diagnosis of poliomyelitis and our friend will tell us whatever we studied till now come back friend tell us what we studied so far we studied lab diagnosis of uh, poliomyelitis there we saw two steps virus isolation and antibody detection in virus isolation we will uh, take collect the specimen transport it and put it in the monkey kidney cell and we will see the uh, detect the virus then uh, antibody detection we will detect uh, by neutralization test and the uh, cft what is cft complement fixation test okay that's all for now more 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 we can study later okay or repeat the video again and read 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 all the best for exam bye bye and don't forget to come back for the most important video prophylaxis against polio vaccines immunoprophylaxis bye bye